que den dos clamores las campanas, pues el velatorio empieza. Y nos hundiremos en un mar de luto. Blasphemous 2 may very well be my favorite game I played that's released in 2023 so far. Better than Amnesia the Bunker. I love the first Blasphemous, rough edges and all. With a few tweaks, they can make something special. And they did with Blasphemous 2, with some caveats. Most of the glaring frustrations of the original are gone. The expanded platforming is tight and can get pretty creative. The tweaked weapon system offers more variety, choices, and fun. Bosses are a lot more fun. That said, the atmosphere, which helped carry the original, isn't as strong here. The story was wasn't quite as compelling. That said, the developers at the Game Kitchen made several free content updates to the original to make it a more complete package. I'm expecting the same here. As it stands at its initial release, Blasphemous 2 is a fantastic game. I hope it doesn't fall through the cracks, due to a release date around other notable releases like Starfield. If you love the original, you'll be right at home here. If the first Blasphemous didn't click with you, give the second a try. It addresses the glaring frustrations of the original. Oh, and be sure to play the game with Spanish voices for the best experience. I found myself saying penitente throughout the day as a result of playing after. Penitente. Retornado del sepulcro y caminando entre los dolientes. Que las manos del milagro os guíen, penitente. Bailad ahora con mi acero, penitente. Bordaremos vuestra carne en sagrado castigo. En un tapiz de sangre y oro. Let's start with the improvements of Blasphemous 2. While I love the first game, I could understand why it didn't gel with others. It could be very rough around the edges. It could veer off course from challenging into the realm of frustrating. More or less, Blasphemous 2 addresses all of this. Not in the sense that it's dumbing the game down. As a result, it's able to shift more of its focus to challenges from platforming and combat. The first game could get on my nerves under certain circumstances. I found none of that in Blasphemous 2. The most notable change is dealing with pits and spikes. No more instant kills. Instead, you'll take a chunk of damage. That said, they still do damage, but falling into them isn't a one-way ticket back to the last checkpoint. The slide attack is much easier to pull off. It always felt a bit off in the original and sometimes wouldn't activate when I wanted it to. Although on that note of combat, sometimes parry counters would miss. An early release bug that I'm sure we'll receive addressing. To note, I did play the original Blasphemous about a year after it came out. By that point, they dealt with all the nasty bugs that plagued the game at launch. You'll get access to a prayer to teleport you back to the city near the beginning of the game. When using the teleporters, it shows the map screen instead of the world screen so you know where you're going to end up. If you do enough exploring, you'll be able to warp between any visited checkpoints. And it's not like it's given right away. You have to earn it, and by the time you do, it's nice to have. The teleporters have a good layout to get around with the convenience of location. Blasphemous 2 makes vast improvements all across the board, with a few exceptions. Before we look at these further improvements, let's talk about its presentation. Despite its flaws, I was able to deal with the frustrations of the first Blasphemous because of its strong atmosphere. It's a dark, bleak nature taking heavy influence from Spanish Catholicism. In Blasphemous 2, it's not quite the same level. Now, due to the nature of its setting, it does lose some of its luster coming back for a second time, but I don't find this to be the main issue. Most of this is due to the shifts in the graphics and cutscenes. The setting feels less grim this time around. Don't get me wrong, it's still a dark setting, but not to the same extent. It's more upbeat, there's more hope in this world. I prefer the more bleak feeling of the original. While it's still stunning, I didn't find the backgrounds or sections as inspired as the original. I also felt the flow of the original from an area standpoint was better. Some areas in Blasphemous 2 have some odd transitions from one to another that felt a bit haphazard. But the most noticeable downgrade comes from the cutscenes, which while sparse in both games, giveth and taketh away from its atmosphere. The first Blasphemous made use of a pixelated style for cutscenes. It complemented the in-game graphics. One of the first moments that grabbed me was after the first boss. The cutscene of the Penitent One filling his helmet with blood. This is when I knew I was in for something special. The style of cutscene is very different here, something with a higher budget and much higher production. They look fine, but the issue is that they clash with the in-game aesthetic, like they came from those who had two different ideas of what they wanted. 
It's not like the game has hours of cutscenes. They add up to very little screen time, but it does have a noticeable difference in the mood and atmosphere. On the sound front, the music is on par with the original. Some of the best, most memorable tracks I've heard in some time from games. A large part of this game's ambition comes from the revamped weapon system. Instead of one main weapon, we have access to three. A war sensor, a slow, powerful weapon. Another option is the two swords for a fast flurry of attacks. Third option is a blade that plays most like the sword from the original. Although we don't have access to all three weapons at once. At the beginning of the game, we can choose which one we start with. Choice does have a noticeable impact on progression in the early game. Each of these three weapons have a unique feature in regards to platforming. For me, I started with the dual swords. As a result, I could only use these statues with the mirrors for platform progression during the early stretch. This does change how the early sections of the game plays out. You'll then find the other two weapons, at which point you can now use their platform abilities. With the war sensor, I love ringing the bell in the notes that play when landing on the created platforms. As a result, the early stretch of the game has the most love and care put into it. To balance out the progression possibilities depending on the order you get each weapon, it must have taken some time to work out. It's a nice little incentive for replayability to see how things play out in the early game depending on which weapon you take. Once we find the three weapons and defeat key bosses, the game gets more linear with its progression. They're still well designed areas, but they were a step down from what came prior. Not as intricate with a looping level design compared to earlier stretches. Not bad by any means, but not quite up to what came earlier. Although, these later areas can offer more creative platforming. Now that we have all three weapons, platforming challenges open up. The best platforming sections are when you have to switch back and forth between weapons to access their platforming abilities, sometimes under a time limit. And it's enjoyable due to much tighter controls. Some of that frustration from the first Blasphemous arose from frustrating platforming. Sometimes it felt more on the controls than you screwing up. Here, if I screwed up, that was on me. They added Metroidvania staples that were present in the original like double jump and air dashes. They all feel great to use. With the three weapons along with prayers or spells, we have more options in combat. It was a lot of fun swapping through weapons on the go depending on encounters. However, I found myself using the dual swords I started with less often as the game went on. I'm sure there will be some balanced tweaking with the weapons. Then again, there might have been some abilities that I didn't take full advantage of with them. In regards to enemies, there are many familiar faces, along with new ones. While the new ones are welcome additions, I didn't find any that blew me away like the original designs. Some are straightforward, some can kick your butt if you're not careful. Combat is where the heart of the difficulty lies in Blasphemous 2, especially since they cleaned up on the frustrating elements that plague the original. Another area that has a noble downgrade is the execution system, although it is somewhat understandable. In the original, we only had one weapon, so it was easier to create unique executions depending on the enemy. Because there's three weapons here, this would cause a much larger amount of executions to design. So I could see why they scaled back and made them more generic, but most lack the punch for the original. Although not an execution, I have to note the brutal death of one woman with her birds in tow. It didn't take long to feast on her. Where combat is at its best is during boss fights. In Blasphemous 2, there are less spectacles and more structured like a duel. Many are smaller in stature, some the same size as the penitent one. It's the opposite of the original. There, large-sized bosses were the norm. There weren't any bosses here that had me in awe of their design like the original. That said, the fights themselves are much better. Although I did notice the difficulty spikes and drops could be all over the place. There is a good stretch of the middle to late bosses that only required one attempt. Which is too bad, because some of these fights are a blast. One of the Penitents, or Ospina, is a game highlight. Very much a duel in the dance.
My favorite fight was the one with the wet stone and his pan flute. Somewhat comical with the sounds, but it was such a great fight to learn and have that eventual victory. One issue I do have with combat is the game's overuse of locking us in rooms to defeat enemy waves to continue. These are fun, but something that the game relies on a bit too much. Chopping these down in half or so would have been better in my mind. I wouldn't mind having more platforming challenges as a replacement instead. Blasphemous 2 has made many changes to the character progression system. It offers more choice and flexibility with some fun discoveries. Tears of Atonement return with the addition of marks of martyrdom. We use these marks for weapon upgrades. Rosary beads return, although are less of a focus than the original. The most noticeable addition is the altarpiece of favors. We have up to 8 slots. Purchasing slots requires the marks of martyrdom. We'll find and buy altar pieces in our journey. They give various stat boosts. Where things get interesting is how you pair them. Depending on what altar pieces you pair them up with, you can get further stat bonuses. There's a lot of fun experimenting with these altar pieces and seeing what combinations could lead to further stat bonuses. Blasphemous 2 continues in the same vein as the original in regards to its story. We once again play as the Penitent One, rising after a well-earned rest. I guess one penance wasn't enough. That nefarious miracle is up to its weird ways again, about to give birth to a child that we must stop. Aquellos penitentes que el milagro mismo tomó como sus centinelas, ahora aguardan vuestra llegada. Orospina, de la hermandad de los bordadores. Benedicta, de la hermandad de la perpetua oración. Odón, de la hermandad de la sal. Lesmes, de la hermandad de la incorrupción. Todos bajo el mando del penitente más antiguo, el primero que fue, Eviterno, padre de los penitentes. There's a lot of lore from items to piece together with nice callbacks to the first game. Ones that feel natural and not nudging your shoulder going, hey, remember this character? There's a touching send off from an old friend who watched over us. There are many NPCs we'll come across in our journeys with helpful and cryptic words. Some as shopkeepers, some playing into quests. I didn't find the cast of characters as intriguing or memorable compared to the first game. Although there are some that do stand out. Like the one woman feasting at this dinner table, the other at the table long dead. A very eerie section. Sentaos, sentaos. Bienvenidos seáis a esta mesa. Mi nombre es Castula. Pues a pocos pasos hacen sonar las viejas losetas. ¿Qué buscáis aquí? ¿Acaso ansiáis el mismo destino que tuvieron tan... Sí, este caserío, si descubriera el escondrijo del manuscrito de mi hermano Trifón... Hands play a notable part in the imagery within Blasphemous 2. There are a couple of characters that are only a hand or an arm. Acercaos y contemplad esta delicada tumbada. Los mantones bordados, los vestidos de seda. Os encontráis en el comercio de Regina. Sentid como vuestro fervor exuda por cada fisura de vuestro metal y regocijaos. Penitente mío, os continuaré asistiendo si me entregáis vuestros besos. Others come to us on a hand. Hands do play a large role in religious imagery, so it makes sense. That or someone at the studio was able to sneak in their hand fetish. In one of those many quality of life improvements, some characters have their functions merged from the original. Instead of having a separate character we go to for each, there's a woman who provides more chalices for healing, along with extending her life and the effectiveness of healing. I have to note the use of language and vocabulary of these games. Pulling heavy from Catholicism, the way they speak stands out from so many other titles. Again, for the best experience, make sure to play in Spanish, since the developers are from there. Sé testigos de este velatorio antes de mi travesía final. Yo, Radamés, dediqué toda mi larga vida a escuchar las confesiones de tantos y tantos afligidos. Incluso después de fallecidos, podía seguir oyendo el eco de sus dolientes voces, suplicándome volver a ser escuchados, volver a ser confesados. 
There's a lot going on here to piece together, with much up to interpretation. I have to note that the miracle seems a bit inconsistent in how it behaves. Granted, it's always been this force that's hard to get a read on, some chaotic force beyond our understanding. But the way it behaves in Blasphemous 2 seems a bit at odds with how it would be in the original. It's a bit hard to explain, but I've seen others say the same thing about how it works. As we wrap up here, I have to note the future of Blasphemous 2. The first title received a few free DLCs that expand the scope and content. All excellent content, mind you. Although having a crossover with Bloodstain was a bit odd. As it stands, Blasphemous 2 is fantastic. They knocked it out of the park with what a sequel should be in regards to gameplay improvements. While the atmosphere isn't as strong and the story isn't as intriguing, the other improvements outweigh those drawbacks. And if they're going to be adding extra content like they did with the original, expect the game to get even better. There were a few glitches I encountered here and there, and I'm sure some bouncing will happen, but it's still off to a great start. If you love the first one, it's a no-brainer to pick up. If the first one didn't click with you, I'd suggest you give the second a try. The improvements made may outweigh the frustrations you had with the original. In the year that's seen many quality releases, Blasphemous 2 is one of the best. It's a bit of a bummer having it released between many high profile releases, but that's the way she goes. The first game had a long shelf life with constant improvements, and I see the same thing happening here. Thanks for watching. Penitente, ahora que mi rostro ha sido devuelto, puedo hablaros. Mis devotos volverán a esta capilla gracias a vuestros actos y al sacrificio de la Beata, que siempre será recordada. Oh, Regula, no busquéis más mi perdón, pues ya lo tenéis. Ahora ya estáis a mi lado. Y podéis descansar vuestra sufrida espalda en mis brazos. En cuanto a vos, penitente, aceptad esto como recuerdo de regla. Agradecida quedaré siempre. Que mi bendición quede con vos.